Yesterday, Senator Joe Manchin made the announcement that he will not seek another term as U.S. Senator. I think this was expected. I don't know that it caught anybody necessarily by complete surprise. Uh, the polling numbers were not great for Joe Manchin uh, in a race against Jim Justice. He did also mention that he would be uh, making a trip across the country to see what kind of third party, uh, third parties are probably the wrong way to determine it, what kind of uh, movement there is in the middle uh, ground to launch some type of campaign. We've invited Ron Gregory to join us once again. Ron, good morning. How are you, sir? Um, good morning. How are you? Great to have you with us. And uh, Ron, how, how can people find your columns each week? Go to wvstatewide.com, wvstatewide.com. And uh, it's right usually at the very top on Sundays. We produce it on Sundays for our readers. And we've been, I've been writing uh, about West Virginia politics for about 50 years. And I'd be honest. And we'll say in this week's column, too, that I am surprised that uh, Senator Manchin has done what he's done, which is announced he's not running for re-election. Um, I felt all the time that he eventually would decide to go ahead and do that. Now, many people, and I understood the point, kept telling me that when Larry Puccio, the premier political consultant, as far as I'm concerned, in the state of West Virginia, when he announced that he would be for Jim Justice for that U.S. Senate seat, and he has been for years and years and years. Puccio has been uh, Manchin's greatest political advisor and also best friend. When Puccio announced that he was for Justice, that should have told me that Manchin was not going to run, but I didn't read the tea leaves right. I said he would, but he is not going to, and I'm, I'm sure he's not uh, now. So, uh, It'll be interesting to see if the tour you're talking about that he does around the country. I think he probably will be looking at maybe running on that no label uh, line, which will be a, a political line on some ballots around the country, although I don't see how they would get on the West Virginia ballot except if he could run as an independent or something. I don't think I don't I think it's too late to get new, no labels on the West Virginia ballot. Well, excuse me, Ron, Bill Stubblefield, uh, that's not what they're saying, the no label slash unity. Uh, they're on, I think, 13 or 14 ballots now, and they the fully, I mean, statewide ballots, and they say they're going to be on all the ballots by the time of the elections, whether that's... Uh, they will not be. Okay. Let me that, mm -hmm. say that this flat. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of states they cannot possibly be on. Mm -hmm. what, what, what states do you think those would be, Ron? Well, I don't even remember now. I have to go look, but I'll 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 tell you what I'll write about it in this week's column, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it the next time I'm on. But I'll, I'll have a list. There are, are states you can't do that. All right, make sure you mention Bill Stubblefield's the guy <laughs> that that poked you a little bit on this poked one. Poked you a little bit. Did some pushing back, Ron. <laughs> okay. um, well, yeah. I, always, I always like to make these little predictions and and tell people, well, let's wait and see what happens. So yeah. Anyway, so there there there's one. Yeah, excuse um, me, before you go any farther, you uh, talking about Manchin. Uh, I was I was anticipating this would happen, but what surprises me is the timing. It's much, much earlier than I thought uh, that we would actually see him make this announcement. Yeah, I agree with that, too. I'm, I'm surprised that he did it that soon. I was convinced he was going to wait till the very end of yeah. December or in January. So, But he's given, if there are Democrats out there who could run a statewide campaign, uh, there, it just gives them an opportunity to come out now. Uh, one of the uh, people who could have run a statewide campaign is already running for governor, and that's the D. Williams, the mayor of Huntington, will be a strong statewide candidate, could be elected, I didn't say would be, could be elected governor. We're, there could be another Democrat governor before West Virginia gets to the next election. The governor's position is an interesting one in the state, Ron, because it, it has been one that has gone against the trend. When the, when the Democrats were all in power, there were Republicans that broke through. While the Republicans right. were taking over everything else, a Democratic governor in Jim Justice broke through, although some said he was kind of a unicorn in, in the sense that um, probably no other Democrat could have done that. 
But I, I think you, you, can, you just can't completely rule out a Democratic governor in this state, even while Republicans control power and everything else. Well, I think that's true. And I've heard justice called things other than unicorn, by the way. But uh, <laughs> we, I, I guess we want to go into that. Uh, the um, Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and again, I believe what Steve Williams and I spoke with the mayor, with the Huntington mayor, uh, I believe it was last Saturday. Uh, gave, gave him a call on his cell phone, and he was traveling from the eastern panhandle back to Huntington. He mentioned to me that that was the fifth time that he has been in the eastern panhandle in the last 30 days. So he is going to be out working, and he's going to work hard. Uh, he said he is, he is absolutely determined to run well in the eastern panhandle. So I think you're going to, if you haven't seen C. Williams, you will. Uh, I can't imagine that anyone would not be at least impressed by him. Do we? Do we all agree philosophically with him? No, he he is a uh, he certainly is a, a moderate. I don't know everybody who are Republicans who do not like Steve Williams will talk about him being a wild liberal progressive. I don't think he's that, but uh, he has turned Huntington around. Huntington is much improved what it was when uh, before C. Williams became mayor. The man has an impressive resume, absolutely. Yeah, Ron, you mentioned uh, uh, both the U.S. Senate and also the governor. Uh, my, my impression is that it would be easier for a Democrat to win the governor's race than a Democrat to win the U.S. Senate race uh, from West Virginia this time. I believe that. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. <clears throat> I'm not sure how... Yeah, there are people who believe, by the way, we'll drop this in here. Um, there are people who believe that these hearings that will be held on the 15th and 16th in Virginia, in two different cities in Virginia, the second one on the 16th will be in Abingdon, uh, that have to do with the financial situation of the governor and the governor's family. They are absolutely people who are out there convinced that after those two hearings and after judgments are made by the officials in those two cases, that Governor Justice will be morally wounded politically. I don't know. Uh, you know, he's been talked about for not paying his bills, for not paying taxes for seven years now. Nothing's happened. People in the know now tell me that these two hearings will finish him off. Uh, if if they did, you, you do still have, of course, Alex Mooney to fall back on a congressman. Now, Congressman Mooney is not well known in the southern part of the state, but uh, he would be a formidable candidate too. But yeah, I think this. I think the Senate is much more of a lock than the governor's office. Which it, it, it's even more confusing as to why Senator Manchin would make this announcement before some of the governor's legal issues have been resolved. Well, that's yeah, that's absolutely true. And I do want to mention one other thing that we, we might not get on because. Uh, you might not have even seen it up here because I'm not sure we uh, that it's been covered. Um, Amy, uh, Harvey Payton, who is a well-known Kays Valley, Putnam County attorney, accused uh, the Attorney General, Patrick Morrissey, of legal malpractice this week. We did extensive stories on it on wbstatewide.com. I really haven't seen it much of any place else. But what he was talking about, just so everybody knows, is that the case in federal court where the federal magistrate ruled or ordered a directed verdict against the state of West Virginia where some people, well, at least one person, uh, supposedly died because of conditions at the Southern Regional Jail. And when the court had ordered some documents to be produced as part of discovery were told by the attorneys that were representing the state that uh, those documents had been destroyed and no longer existed. That threw the uh, U.S. magistrate into a tizzy, and he did about a 40-page order in which he criticized the state of West Virginia. He criticized them for destroying evidence, uh, said all kinds of things, uh, based upon the testimony before him, and what Peyton was maintaining is that this attorney general, Patrick Morrissey, does not have a civil division 
that represents the state of West Virginia on civil lawsuits. According to Harvey, and now I haven't gone back and checked this, but according to Harvey Payton, who is an attorney in, as I say, Putnam County, Hurricane Putnam County, he says that prior attorney generals always had a civil division, and if you or I or, or anyone else sued the state of West Virginia, they immediately got notice of that and sent a notice to the court, a notice of appearance, that they were representing or at least were monitoring things for the state. He says Morrissey, Morrissey does not do that, and this is going to end up costing millions of dollars to the state of West Virginia because Patrick Morrissey does not have does not get involved in the lawsuits that are filed against the state. John Gilstrap, uh, good morning. I want to go back to the um, the No Labels Unity Party and and uh, Senator Manchin. He he does this. Um, this whistle stop tour and let's say we just create the circumstance where a unity party, no labels party president wins given Washington is so ossified in its, in its two party system. The uh, Republicans seem dominated by the freedom caucus. The uh, Democrats are dominated by whatever AOC and that those, those people call themselves. Um, is that a powerless president to, to have a third party president going into Washington, which is such a two party town? Is is that just dysfunction? Well, it'd be interesting to see what what the end result of that would be. You know, we have had and do have senators up there. Um, Bernie Sanders is, is a independent. So we do have legislative ends that seem to be able to accomplish some things. And I guess when you think about it, although it's a long, long time removed, the uh, administration of Abraham Lincoln and Andrew Johnson was a was a unity ticket uh, that was not really representative of any party. Of course, you hadn't you hadn't come up with Republicans and Democrats. Well, there were some Democrats at that time, but not Republicans until after the Union Party Unionist Party was formed. But um, I would think that the the thing that maybe we would all benefit from is if they were the right kind of person and what Manchin is talking about is of course compromise and working together and I think he's done a great job of, of that as a United States Senator, as as a governor he's proven that he can reach across the aisle and work uh, with the other other side I think that uh, you know if you had I'm not tooting the horn or Joe Manchin for president at this point yet but I will say that I think that uh, he might be, well be an improvement over what else we'd have on the ticket. Do you, was he just bested in this um, Inflation Reduction Act that he signed on to that, that turned out to be more or less the Green New Deal, and then later to um, complain so publicly that he, he felt that the administration was not living up to their word um, in terms of the, the energy issues? Do you think that he was he was really that bamboozled, or was this a strategic move, knowing that he was going to retire anyway? It was probably a strategic move. Uh, I don't think Joe Joe Manchin does much of anything that he doesn't at least give a lot of thought to. And uh, you know, the other thing that I would say to listeners and to y'all and, and talking to you here is, um, I think we see the end of an era with the loss of Joe Manchin as a uh, United States Senator, the current crop of uh, representatives that come down the pipe, whether in West Virginia or wherever, are a different breed of people. We used to have the Sager family in the Eastern Panhandle. We had uh, the Keys in Southern West Virginia. We had uh, the Mollahans in the Northern part of the state, Archmore and, uh, and, her, and his family also in the, in the Northern Panhandle. Those are people who have really been involved in the fabric of the state of West Virginia uh, and were, I don't want to say they were commoners, because certainly they were not, but Staggers are an aristocratic-type family, in my view. I don't think they think they are, but they certainly are. Uh, but I think we, we, the one thing that we had from all of those people, and particularly even the Nick Joe Ray Hall, who are, is now retired and out of politics, and Alan Mollahan, who's still living, but he's not not in politics anymore, or Dave Benedict. I think you had people then 
that were more familiar. If Harley Staggers walked down the street in Kaiser, he knew every person on that street, and they knew him. Danny Jones, the mayor of Charleston, said in the last month of his term after having been mayor 16, 20 years, after he was mayor 20 years and Alex Mooney had been the congressman, he had never met Alex Mooney. I think they're going to have the same kind of thing. Now, Joe Manchin now stays on the phone all day. If he's out riding around with his driver, he's calling people in West Virginia and talking to them. I think you've seen the last of that kind of people service that you get from Joe Manchin. Yeah, I agree. Can we go back to the unity? Uh, take it uh, a couple of minutes, uh, Ron. Uh, one of the things I thought would probably dampen uh, Senator Manchin's move in this direction is that the funders, the heavy funders for the no label slash unity target, saying that it will have to a Republican will be uh, top billing and then the running mate would be a Democrat. Uh, it's Again, I found that is uh, the timing of this announcement was unusual, and the fact that Senator Manchin would would accept a uh, the vice president proposed ticket as opposed to president is surprising as well. Well, I think that yeah. I, I, again, I will say that I I don't I know I'm not going to say this again. I haven't said this before. I don't think this is the end of Joe Manchin. What what I have said many people have we've been trying to analyze this is and they have had the same ideas, and that is that Joe Manchin will have a future if he wants to have it. If he goes out and tours the country, decides to run as the no-label candidate, gets on the ticket as the president or vice presidential candidate, then he might be elected, and that would be a future. Uh, on the other hand, if he wants to tour the country, uh, comes back and finally says maybe in April, that, well, I've toured the country, I know what the pulse of the country is, and what they really want is, and I'll just throw this out, John Kennedy the uh, third that's who they want as president, or he has the same views that they do, so I'm backing him. Then Manchin would, of course, become some big uh, department head when, if that fellow ever got elected. So I think, I think that uh, Manchin has a future. I think we're going to see him tour the country. I think he'll be building himself up. But I think he will also, if he doesn't run himself, he will have the candidate he wants to be elected when he gets done. Ron Gregory, our guest here on the program. You can find Ron's column at wvstatewide.com. I want to ask you a couple of questions about some folks you've written about recently, including Brandon Steele, who had... Uh, decided for a moment that he was going to leave the House and uh, has changed his mind on that. And you mentioned that he might be a front-runner to be the next judiciary chair, Ron. How did you come up with that information? Well, those are those are emptying out, of course, the people that are on the, in the Judiciary Committee. More Capito is, uh, is running for governor. And, uh, of course, the vice chair, uh, whose name just escaped me, um, the vice chair of judiciary mm -hmm. is not also not not running so brandon is an attorney brandon uh was the head of the uh, uh government org there for a period of time he's got other committees he is a member of the committee i think he's an up-and-coming uh, politician on the republican side i think you'll be seeing more of brandon Steele. i i'm sure that he's ambitious uh sure that he would like to be well as they all would Everybody would like to live in the governor's mansion except Jim Jeff. <laughs> now we have we have wondered though about one thing. If these hearings and I'll go back to this because I want people in the Eastern Panhandle to know that I first told them about this. If in these hearings on the fifteenth and sixteenth and the end result is that uh, Governor Justice loses the Greenbrier Hotel and his residence in Lewisburg, the question is, will he finally live in Charleston? That's the issue. <laughs> By the way, Tom Fast, the uh, vice chair of judiciary. Uh, yeah. I'm whatever sorry. you're looking for. That's, that's, that's quite all right. And he's running uh, for a different office. Yeah. Now, he's you, running for judge as well. Still well known for attempting to uh, unseat Roger Hanshaw as the uh, Speaker of the House. Would... Uh, 
Would you think that that was some type of an olive branch that Roger would be throwing out to Brandon to make him judiciary chair? Because it would seem to me that that would be the last thing Roger would do. Well, yeah, I think I think that it would be, and I think that they buried most of that hatchet. I think that uh, I'm not even so sure how or what time and what the timing was, and I don't don't pretend to know on on that relationship. I do think that um, um, Roger is a very reasonable uh, person. I think that he wants the best people he can get in those positions. I, and of course he has personal feelings. It's as I say all the time about a reporter, you know, I can talk about and radio hosts uh, and others can talk about how we're totally unbiased. Well, we're humans. So we get, we have a few biases of some kind, surely. Um, but I think Roger is very fair. I think they, um, that may be led Brandon to decide to run for judge and I think the fact that they are probably getting along better now probably is the reason he changed his mind back the other way. Ron, uh, you said, I think you said Sunday is when the new columns come down, right? It'll be out on Sunday around noon, wbstatewide.com and um, I'm planning on making some trips to the Eastern Panhandle so we'll we'll try to see some people up here as well and I'm I'm always very fascinated with the politics of the of the Eastern Panhandle, and of course the thing about uh, that I said about Congressman Mooney is he's been able to be elected from the Eastern Panhandle without even having to have any votes in Charleston. So, very important part of the state. Ron, thanks so much. If you are up here, look us up. If you're in town on a Friday morning, come on in studio. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ron.